usually uh, it's me doing the talking, as um, everybody knows. Uh, but with this one, uh, the Magic Flute, uh, I've got the CD, but I never really got into it. Uh, I've got just about every CD. What a waste of money that was. <laughs> I've got Spotify now. Uh, but um, uh, with this one, uh, the Magic Flute, uh, Lauren was um, explaining this portion of the opera. And it went like this, and this goes to the Queen of the Night's motivations. Now, the Queen of the Night was married to a god, essentially. I don't know whether I heard it perfectly, what she was telling me, but, you know, it went something like this. Um, and um, her husband you know, died. Uh, he left his money uh, to his wife, but he left his magic to someone else, uh, a male as it turns out, you know, a prodigy, um, someone he thought deserved the magic. Now, I call the magic anything you want, respect, anything you want, you know, um, admiration, whatever. Anyway, in the opera, it's literally magic. Okay, so he left the money to the wife. But that's almost an insult. He didn't leave the magic power, as it were. His respect. His respect, if you like. Okay. Um, he left it to this other guy. Uh, but she felt disrespected. She uh, Look, it's almost proto-feminist, the way I was hearing it. Um, and she, I think, thought it was something to do with the fact that it was that she was a woman. She felt disrespected for a start. She felt insulted. Um, but it was left to this other guy. Now, um, this was her um, inheritance, really. But it's much more than the sort of inheritance that a king could give to a princess. This is a god, you know. Um, this is magic, you know. I mean, whether you should inherit magic, uh, which is far greater than any earthly thing. You know, it's bigger. And um, what happened was, um, uh, well, the husband and the Queen of the Night, who wasn't initially the Queen of the Night, the husband, I think it was the husband, um, cursed her. She had all the wealth, but she was cursed to live in the night. Um, uh, because, so that she couldn't um, get up to any mischief during the day. Okay, so she's con condemned to live her life in the night time, something like that. Anyway, she has a daughter. Now, she thinks that the magic uh, that her husband, the god, had was supposed to go to herself and, and then to her daughter and, and beyond. Now, her daughter as it turns out, has fallen in love with the prodigy, the guy that the husband has left the magic to. But this is all wrong. It's wrong in the mind and heart of the Queen of the Night. You know, it goes something like that. And yeah, it'd be, you'd have to, uh, you know, I would have to watch the, you know, go to the opera um, to get a feeling for this, but it comes to pass that she, the Queen of the Night, asks her daughter to kill her lover. Um, uh, because uh, I think the Queen of the Night is trying to protect the daughter as well. Uh, because the magic allows you, I think, to uh, avoid many evils in the world too. And she thinks this is something that should stay with herself and then to her daughter. She doesn't really even want it for herself. She wants it for her daughter and, and beyond. Um, she can't really even use this magic because she's cursed. She's condemned to the night. She just wants the magic to pass it on, you know, perhaps something like that. And she beseeches the daughter um, to stab the boyfriend. 
who is in possession or is going to be in possession of the magic. Uh, but the daughter won't because she's in love. Now, as it turns out, bad things end up happening to the daughter, uh, you know, as operas would have it. You know, I think she even ends up raped or something by some other disgusting creature, you know, person, dirty old bastard or something like that. But anyway, whatever happens, but the mother had been trying to protect the daughter. <sighs> and it didn't work out. The magic goes to the other guy. Everything ends up badly. Um, and um, isn't this the way often <laughs> in the classics, you know? Um, yeah, yeah, the Bible would have it that, you know, there's a happy ending if you just trust in God, for example. Movies, most movies have a resolution of some sort, you know, uh, something bad is happening, but there's a, a some form of revolution, uh, resolution at the end. Even if everyone dies, you know, there's re resolution in death in, uh, you know, in most movies, I think, you know, in most stories even. Um, but this one ends with nothing being resolved because sometimes in life, things just don't work out, you know. Uh, we go to the movies, perhaps, um, and read the Bible, perhaps, sometimes, so that we know there is, uh, you know, no matter how bad it gets, there's, uh, there's, um, there's something at the end. I don't know if you'd call it a happy ending or whatever. You know, even, look, even if you, um, if you're in um, a concentration camp, Nazi Germany, all that sort of stuff over in Poland or something, um, as long as you've got your faith in God, it works out in the end because you go to heaven. You know that sort of thing. But in a, in an opera like this, it kind of notes that occasionally in the human existence, condition, it just doesn't, you know? And that's that. You know? Don't go and see that opera. <laughs> it doesn't seem to go anywhere, you know? Too realistic, maybe.